Hello, Abraxas here, and I'm going to be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So, I have a suggestion from Order Squad Mata, and they are asking me what would happen if Earth had the density of 0.0000001 milligrams? And see how big it gets. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to turn off, or I'm gonna have to lock some settings here to actually do something like that. Okay. What is going on with that polar cap? <laughs> okay, that's a little bit weird. Uh, let's slow down time and just hit play. Okay, it is being cooked away by solar radiation, it looks like. Yep. Okay, so before it cooks away, let's change this to a value of 0.000000. 000. Um, I zero one. Okay, Earth is quite big. In fact, its radius, or yeah, its radius is 2.42 million. That's million, right? Yeah, that's million. No. Oh. No, that's 24 million kilometers. Okay, so Earth is big. Like, very big. In fact, there is the regular Earth. You cannot even... Let, let's pause the game and just drop it in. Here is normal Earth. <laughs> so, that Earth is quite a bit bigger. And uh, what's the rest of this suggestion? See how fragile it is when applied tidal forces, so... I assume you want me to drop the moon around it, but I can't really drop it accurately. I could drop it to scale. It doesn't even want to orbit around it. Look at that. The moon's not even favoring an orbit around this thing. It's wa it wants to orbit around the sun. It tries to orbit if I drop it like really, really close right there. Okay, let's get rid of the sun. Now it's just illuminated by quote unquote studio lighting or a flashlight or something like that. So let's just change the light to studio. That way it's illuminated wherever we look at it. So let's see if we can get the moon to actually orbit around this. So there's the moon. And let's just hit play. You know, when I think about it, that moon is probably orbiting quite far away, and I don't even think it's actually in a successful orbit. Oh, yeah, it is. Well, it's not orbiting that far away. Or, I mean, it's orbiting somewhat far away, but it's not exactly shredding the planet apart. Of course, here's the sun for comparison to this Earth. That's got to be... Like the distance between the sun and like Mercury or something. So I gotta get the moon really, really close to this giant. Like really, really, really close. Like that close. Oh, look at that. I think it's actually being affected by tidal forces. You can see there's actually particles being torn away. think. I don't really know. It definitely made some particles. Let's try a bigger body. If I use something like Earth, that's not going to work. Hmm. Maybe something that's not like the size of Earth, because if, it, if it's Earth, it's going to want to orbit around itself. Try Mercury. Alright, let's pause this and catch back up with Earth. Circles. Hmm. 
I'm noticing Earth is frozen, but uh, temperature is actually 765 degrees Celsius. You can see there is a lot of particles on the side. See all these little faint dots here? Oh no, that's happening everywhere. From tidal forces, so tidal forces doesn't seem to have an effect on this. But, I guess what I can do is make it a binary system orbiting around Earth in a balanced motion. Like this? Maybe? orbiting around each other. Now Earth doesn't even know how to orbit this. Let's turn off balance motion and just try to get these two to orbit around each other. No, it can't even figure that out. I'm pretty sure this low density has basically broken the game. Oh wait, the uh, oceans have liquefied. Okay, it's getting molten now. Probably due to that earth. Let's set earth back and see how hot this thing gets. It's actually dropping in temperature. What's this earth doing? It's frozen. Well, it seems to be very easily influenced by total heating. Uh, let's get it to orbit Jupiter. No, oh, it doesn't even want to move. Well, what just happened? It shrunk. Maybe something like this is a proper value that the game could actually register and then maybe be affected by tidal forces. Try orbiting Mercury around it and see if it gets ripped apart. And the only way I'd imagine that tidal forces would actually have an effect on this is if a larger mass is actually orbiting around it. Oh, did it just shrink to normal Earth size? Close. So, let's get in a binary orbit around Jupiter now. Jupiter's glowing. Earth being torn apart by this, though. It should definitely be in the Roche limit of Jupiter when it's this close. So let's just remove, oh no. Let's remove Jupiter from the equation. Send Earth flying off into nowhere. Up, oh, it's flying off into the other Jupiter. Let's not have that. And let's set it in a binary orbit around, hmm. Planet nine, it's equivalent to 10 Earths. That should have an effect. Nope, not quite tearing each other apart like they should be. You know, this is a very interesting experiment, but I don't think it actually works that way in the game. It seems really buggy and weird, like very unusual. Because Earth should be getting shredded apart by Planet 9. It's 10 masses of Earth, so that should be enough to make a thing happen here. I could try decreasing the semi-major axis, but uh, they might collide. But I'll try to squeeze them just a little bit closer. Yeah, not quite being shredded apart, so when you do that to Earth, I guess it gets very buggy. Of course, I undid it, so the planet was completely resurfaced. Let's go ahead and open a new simulation, just so I can kind of show the effects of tidal forces. Because even if you have something like a binary pair of Earths, it should shred each other apart. If they orbit close enough together. So here's a balanced motion between two Earths. 
And if I hit play, they should start like trading rocks pretty much. No, they're not quite doing that. Hmm, I've seen the effect before. Nope, not quite shredding each other apart. What if I decrease the seven major axis of each other? Well, I'm gonna wanna click on this one. Yep, pause it, there we go. Out there. Yeah, I think one just ejected. That ejected very fast, apparently. Okay, one more. Let's add two Earths and a binary pair, super close to each other, like that. Slow down time, and hit play. I swear I've done this before and I've had them actually rip apart. Something wrong with the settings I have in the simulation? This is an older simulation. It might not actually have it turned on. It should be turned on. That's video settings. Performance. What happens if I change this to like 100? I, I can't even turn that up. I'll go to the vanilla simulation. Let's just open like the uh, default one. Solar system. Because maybe it was a problem with the simulation I was running. Let's go ahead and slow down time. And let's just add Earth to a binary orbit, stable, close to each other like that. Oh, that was a collision. Let's do it again. Nope, tidal forces ain't really working there either. Mm -mm. Well, I'm going on 15 minutes now and I can't really get a result on this. Earth for some reason is not wanting to be shredded apart today. I don't know why. be a balanced orbit and they just crash right into each other. Slow down time quite a bit more. Well, they're heating each other up properly. And they're falling into the sun properly. But now they don't actually want to uh, shred each other apart. Let's, uh... If this effect is working at all, something like, uh, let's say... Um, Neptune. Should shred something apart. Let's just put like Mercury orbiting very, very close to Neptune. Okay, or not, or not, or just have it fall right in. Make it orbit around Neptune. There we go. So this isn't exactly falling apart. I don't know if I turn something off and things just don't want to shred apart right now, or what. But I want to see tidal forces destroy something. Okay, I'm seeing rocks. There we go. We're getting a result. Okay, so it is working, and it's not just something I accidentally turned off or something like that. So, very good to know. I don't have anything to literally, or to really elaborate on. Um, 
I don't know why Earth wasn't shredded apart when its density was low. You would think it would be. Um, but I guess that's kind of the same principle of, like, if you put a, put a rocky planet really close to a gas giant, you don't really steal the gas from the gas giant, which is super low density. It's hydrogen and helium and stuff like that. So... I guess the game just doesn't really support it. You would think if there was a small rock around a gas giant, it would steal some of its, like, hydrogen or something. The same way you'd see, like, a black hole or, I don't know, a neutron star steal mass away from a star. But, in the game, it just doesn't really work. You could put something like a black hole around a star and steal the mass from a star. But yeah, if Earth had such a low density like that, you would imagine that if you place a small rocky world around it, it would actually steal some of its mass, but it's not really doing that. So, I guess the game just naturally does not support it. But, uh, here's Mars being torn apart. Let's just go ahead and speed up time and watch it get shredded. A couple collisions happening on Mars, too. And there it is, just being peeled away. And... There was a small comet tail there, and now it's a little asteroid, and eventually it will just disappear, or get down to a small enough asteroid to the point where it will stop uh, shrinking. Anyways, there you guys go. Uh, I don't know what results I really got in this test, but uh, eh, if you guys like the video, please leave it a like. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe, it really does help, and I will see you guys in the next one.